Okay. Hi, and um, welcome to our Applying to Psychology Graduate Programs webinar. This is the first time that we have done a webinar like this, so we are um, really excited that you're attending. Um, happy to get the chance to talk to you in this way and answer any questions that you have about our graduate program. Um, we're still sort of learning the ropes of these webinars, but it sounds like so far uh, the sound is working um, and you can see our screen, um, and so that's ideal. So um, let me introduce myself briefly, and then we also have three graduate students in our MA in Psychological Research program here, and then our program specialist. So my name is Kelly Haskard Zolnarek. I'm the program director of the MA in Psychological Research program at Texas State. Hi, I'm Callie Delacerda, and I'm a second year student at, in the MAPR program here at Texas State. Hi, I'm Rachel Farley. I'm also second year in the MAPR program here at Texas State. Hello, um, I'm Erin Coward, and I am also in a second year in this program as well. Hi, I'm Sarah Pollock. I'm the program specialist for the program. I deal with administrative and help with all of the students. All right, so um, let me give you just sort of a brief overview of what we're going to cover today during the webinar. Um, I want to tell you a little bit about the purpose of our master's program. Um, also, the degree requirements, so what our, our typical um, sort of degree looks like, degree plan. Um, the purpose, one of the main purposes of this is to talk about the application process. We always get a lot of questions from students who are applying, and if we can answer some of those in the webinar format, um, we'd like to do so. So we'll talk about the application process. Um, funding and funding your graduate program is always a question of interest for students, so we'll talk about funding. Um, I want to give you just a sampling of the research that our faculty and students are involved in and also tell you a little bit about what some of our alumni are doing as that's often a question also what will I do after I complete this program and then um, our three students um, Callie and um, Rachel and Aaron will be talking about sort of their experiences and providing any tips and advice and then at that point we will open it up to any questions that you have either through the chat or through um, audio as well. All right, so this program is a two-year program. It is on campus, not a distance learning program. It's a full-time program. And the goal of the program is for students who are interested in working either in research settings or pursuing a PhD in psychology. And the program has a very strong empirical base. So if you are wanting to learn to be a counselor in this program or, or learn clinical skills, this may not be the program for you, but if you're interested in further research training, um, maybe to strengthen your application for a PhD program, this may be the right program for you. So we are um, trying to train students in interpersonal skills, research skills, um, statistical skills, um, writing and um, presentation skills that will help them to independently conduct psychological research. And um, although we have a non-thesis option, nearly 100% of our students do complete a thesis. All the students who are here today um, have completed or are completing a thesis. And so that's I'm, I'm kind of what I'm going to focus on is talking about the thesis um, track. So students in our program take uh, a number of required classes and then a number of elective classes. So it's a 38 hour program, research seminar, research methods and experimental design um, are uh, all classes taken during the first year. Univariate and bivariate statistics is taken in fall of the first year, multivariate statistics in the spring. Biological basis of behavior is typically taken during spring of the of the first year as well. Um, and then in the first year, students also take one elective per semester. In the second year, two electives per semester, as well as their thesis courses. Um, so there are a lot of elective hours, and um, I think that the uh, strength of our program is that we offer electives in a lot of areas of psychology. So depending on what um, sort of your areas of interest are, um, hopefully you could find elective courses that match with those areas. I also don't have this in the PowerPoint, but um, 
many of our students take courses outside the department in areas of research interest. So that is possible as well, and they can count toward the degree plan um, if they're ap applicable to your research and career goals. So this is a partial list of our elective courses. So these are just examples. But as you can see, there are courses that group into different areas of psychology. So there's clinical types of courses. Um, advanced abnormal psychology is usually offered every year, sometimes every semester. Psychopharmacology assessment, neuropsychological assessment. Um, and then there are courses in other areas of psychology like social psychology, developmental psychology. We have a number of cognitive um, and neuroscience classes, such as human memory, uh, intro to psychophysiology, and learning cognition and motivation. Um, many of our students want to get additional statistical training beyond what they can get or what they will get in the first year of our program. So we do have advanced statistical methods courses that um, are taught. Um, there's, this is one of them, advanced statistical methods. There are a couple of other course titles that fall into the statistics category. We have a health psych, we actually have several health psychology electives. Um, and then other options include individual study where students work with a faculty member on a project that's a mutual interest to them, um, as well as an internship course. So let's say you're thinking about applying to this program and you're wanting to know um, what are what's the process in doing that. So you will complete the Apply Texas application. You will submit your transcripts and that, that you do need to submit copies from each institution where credit was granted. Um, we do require a minimum 3.0 GPA on the last 60 hours of undergraduate work. And you don't have to calculate that GPA yourself. The admissions specialists in the graduate college will do that for you. Um, there's three required courses, intro psych, um, statistics, quantitative and statistical methods, and experimental and research methods, uh, be or better in those classes. And uh, those are the titles of those courses at Texas State. If you're a non-Texas State student and took those courses as a psychology major somewhere else with slightly different names, um, as, as all of our students here, um, uh, different undergraduate institutions, then we will take the courses with, with slightly different titles. Um, GRE scores are required. We um, have a sort of a preferred competitive minimum is what we typically say as far as the scores are concerned. Just keeping in mind that you're submitting an entire application package and the GRE scores are just sort of one part of that. It is the general test. Um, we don't take the psychology subject test. The additional docu documents are your resume or CV, your research interest statement. This is um, a fairly important statement. Um, so I'm going to talk about this in a little bit more detail. Um, but there you will list three faculty members um, from our faculty who you're interested in working with, a statement of purpose, and then three letters of recommendation. So some tips from me. And our grad students may have other tips. Um, if if they can remember that application process now that we're um, they're, they're nearing the end of their program here. But I, we definitely recommend asking for letters of recommendation early so that faculty, if your letter writers are faculty um, or work supervisors, have time to write um, thought, thoughtful, good letters for you. And that those people um, be people that know your potential, that know your scholarly work or sort of what your interests are and can speak to that in the letter, um, the letters that they write. Um, regarding that research interest statement, you may wonder, well, how do I figure out what the faculty are working on? Let's see if the links work here. But we have um, a faculty research page that groups. Um, you can't see it. OK. Um, I wonder how to get, I'm just going to talk about it. Um, and we can send out this PowerPoint if needed so that you can access the links. So just email us um, and we will get you the links. So it looks like neither of these links I can get um, a way for you to see it. Um, but maybe if I do that, you can see the link and you can type it in yourself. So that's one option. Okay, so there's two places to read about our faculty research. One is a page where our faculty are grouped according to their research interests. They write sort of a little blurb about their interests and what they're working on. There are links to their lab webpage if they have them. We also have a faculty directory with all of the faculty's very short bullet pointed interests 
that can be sorted by whether faculty are accepting graduate students or not. Their CVs are also linked there. So those are the places that I would say to look uh, as far as what faculty are working on. You're also welcome to email a faculty member and say, um, I'm interested in applying and would like to list you. Will you be accepting a student next year and kind of start to talk to them over email? Um, we don't have a formal interview process, so that can be a great way to actually make contact with a faculty member before you actually get here. Um, so those are some ways that you can go about determining which faculty um, that, oops, sorry, that you would like to um, list on your statement. Um, in your statement of purpose, talk about why you're applying to a psychology graduate program, what you want to do research-wise during this program, and your long-term uh, career goals as well. When you submit your Apply Texas application is when you get um, the, the ability to access, it's called GADU, <laughs> to upload your documents. So those several documents that we talked about, so just know it's sort of a two-step process in that sense. Um, and also our deadlines are important to pay attention to. Our priority deadline for 2019 is February 1st. Um, I'll, I'll talk about why, I'll talk about funding, but, but this is important to be considered for certain types of funding. So I recommend meeting that deadline if you can. Our April 30th deadline is the standard, kind of the final deadline. Um, so, so there is a wide range in there, but the earlier the better um, is what I would recommend. Okay, so um, the million dollar question about how to fund your degree. Um, many of our students, including all the students here today, are graduate instructional assistants or graduate teaching assistants. And um, we have limited numbers of positions. I wish we could offer a position to every graduate student that wants one, but there are cases when we just don't have enough positions because they're based on outside funding and other factors. Um, as an incoming student, again, the best thing that you can do to qualify for either a 10 or 20 hour a week uh, GIA position is to apply early. So to apply before February 1, where then you will have priority priority consideration for those positions. And most of our students who get a position to start with carry it through throughout, not the exact same position, but have a GIA or a, a GTA position throughout um, the two years in the program. We also have some summer um, GIA positions as well. So that's a, a major area of, of funding. Uh, there's also scholarships. The graduate college scholarships have a February 1 deadline as well. So that's where the, the February 1 comes into play. There are two graduate college scholarships. You would apply for those yourself and the links for those are on our website. We also have an MAPR scholarship. By applying, you kind of go into the pool for that scholarship. So there isn't anything additional that you necessarily have to do. The thing I didn't mention on this funding slide, um, but I think is important to mention, is we also have travel funding for conference travel, and we also have um, thesis. There is thesis support funding um, within the department and, and university um, through the grad, graduate college. So those are other um, sort of ways of funding research-related activities. Okay, so we have a large faculty doing research in all kinds of areas. I've highlighted just four of them for you. Um, not for any particular reason, these four, but, but that I think that they represent some of the breadth of research in our department. Uh, one is Dr. Kate Warnell. She's a developmental psychologist and she studies social cognition. Kelly is her um, student. Kelly, who's here today, um, has worked with her um, as her mentee. Um, Ty Shepis is another. He's a clinical psychologist. He studies adolescent and young adult prescription misuse. Alex Dinadai is a clinical and quantitative psychologist. He studies uh, treatment uh, efficacy for anxiety and other conditions. Um, and, and these are just very short sort of snippets of their research. There's much more information on our website. Jean Hu is one of our, our faculty as well. She's a quantitative psychologist who does health-related research. One of her areas of research is studying sleep and how it is influenced by kind of the everyday things we do, like eating and drinking and exercise. Um, and so again, just this is a very brief sampling, but um, of, of some of our research active faculty. So one of the things that we really encourage our students to get involved with is presenting their research, whether it is poster presentations or conference presentations or um, disseminating it more widely in, in the form of journal article um, submissions. 
Again, this is just a sort of a very small selection. Um, one of our second year students, Morgan Snyder, uh, presented her thesis research at our on-campus Texas State Graduate Student Conference. Um, and Amanda Jones and Marika Visser are actually two recent alumni of our program who have both uh, published research that they worked on while they were here, um, co-authored papers with faculty members. And um, one is on anxiety in the workplace, the other on how depression influences outcomes after knee surgery. So um, the, the ideal goal here um, for students, especially that want to go into PhD programs, is to build up this, your CV and your research experience. And publishing, presenting are, are really um, wonderful ways to do that. OK, and so almost, again, 100% of our students do a thesis. And um, ultimately, these are pictures of thesis defenses. So that's the kind of culmination is the thesis defense. And uh, Callie, Rachel, and Erin, I'm going to highlight theirs because they're here today. Um, and they're either completed or in progress on their theses and, and will we'll complete in the spring, if not already. So Callie studied group membership on social behavior in young children. Uh, Rachel is studying associations among sexual assault, PTSD, and cognitive functioning. Erin is studying uh, moral violations in groups, how group relationships regulate individual morality. And I think what, if you look at all the thesis titles, I won't read through all of them, but I think they illustrate the range of research interests of our students and, and our faculty, and that it's possible, um, and the students may want to talk about this, to design a study that both matches the expertise of the mentor as well as the expertise of um, the interests and expertise of the student and, and kind of where they want to go as far as their research is concerned. Um, so they may talk a little bit more about their theses. So um, also the question of wh what do alumni of the program do? This program is fairly new. It started in 2013, so we don't have vast, vast numbers of alumni, but we're starting to have um, larger numbers of alumni. Every year we admit anywhere from, or we, we have a class of um, anywhere from 12 to uh, 20 is kind of the typical number of students in a cohort. So some of our past graduates have gone on to PhD programs. I won't read the list, but there's a, um, a long list here. And I think it's important to note that these are programs in all areas of psychology. Um, some students go into clinical, some go into sort of general um, experimental psychology. Uh, there are students that go into health psychology. Um, IO psychology. So there's a there's a lot of different um, types of PhD programs that our students go into. As far as uh, jobs are concerned and, and the workforce, um, other students in the program don't choose to go to a PhD program and they go into the workforce. These are typically research related positions that a graduate of our program would seek out. So sometimes the, the titles of those jobs are research coordinator or research analyst or data analyst, you know, something of the sort where they're doing research statistical analytic skills. And you can see a long list of different types of organizations, um, higher education, medical and health types of organizations, um, private companies, and so really kind of a range of options there as well as far as um, sort of places that a graduate may work upon graduation. Okay. So I'm done with my little, um, my little spiel. I'm gonna have each graduate student come up one at a time and um, talk to you a little bit about their tips, their advice, their experiences, whatever you feel would be helpful for a student who's thinking about applying to our program. Okay. Let it refocus for a second so you can see me. <laughs> there it goes. Okay. Okay. So I'm. My name is Callie again. Um, I'm a second year student. Um, so I'm going to talk to you about a couple things that I've experienced. Um, the first, um, some tips and advice on maybe the application process. I would say start early, um, especially if you're interested in PhD and master's programs. Um, like Dr. Hasker was saying, their deadline is, or their priority deadline is February 1st, um, but typically the PhD programs do come much earlier, um, usually December 1st or sometime in December. 
So I would recommend starting those early. Um, a lot of them do require the letters of recommendation, so you want to make sure that you're giving them enough time to write those letters. Um, so it wouldn't be beneficial to start maybe the week before um, because you want them to give you good quality letters because those are a big piece of your application. Um, I would say maybe a big thing would be if you are interested in research, um, trying to get involved with research um, related things at your um, institution in your undergraduate program is going to be a big plus. Um, your application is going to look nice if they can see, the school can see that you've already been involved in some research, potentially even your own ideas. Um, that's just going to look nice. They're going to know you're aware of, of how it works and that's going to be a big plus for your application. Um, I don't want to steal what everyone's going to talk about, so I'll leave some things for them too. Um, my time here has been great. Um, I'm actually graduating this semester, so I only have two weeks left. Um, but the faculty here have been great, um, super encouraging as far as if we want to continue. Um, they've given us lots of um, opportunities to strengthen our CV, strengthen our resume. Um, that's if you want to go to a PhD program or even if you do want to get one of those work-related positions as well. Um, yeah, so I would say a master's program was a good fit for me because I wasn't super sure about a PhD program. Um, so this was a nice transition to decide um, maybe I'm not ready to commit to a five or six year or four year program quite yet. So a master's was a good segue for me to really understand, okay, this is my research interest. This is the path I want to go um, so that I can narrow my search for PhD schools in the future. Um, let's see. Okay, um, so for applying to this program, um, I found this to be super helpful. I looked probably in July or August, um, I was narrowing my searches for some PhD programs, that's why I started so early, because um, I mentioned their uh, application deadlines are much sooner. Um, so when I was looking at this program, I kind of narrowed it down on who was actually looking for graduate students, because that's important if they're going to be accepting students or not. Um, and then I kind of narrowed my I, my interest as like three or four faculty um, that I might be interested in working with. Um, and then I just started emailing them, <laughs> and they were all very responsive. Um, I even had a couple phone interviews, and um, as Dr. Haster mentioned, I actually work with Dr. Ronell. Um, so what kind of happened with us is we got a phone interview. Um, I read some stuff on her CV. We kind of talked about some things that she did in research. Um, I kind of talked about some things that I wanted to do or could potentially want to do. Um, and then we actually set up a face-to-face -face interview. So I came to campus. That gave me a good chance to look at the campus and really see if it's somewhere I could see myself. Um, and then I got to just talk with her for about 30 minutes or an hour um, because um, yes, you're applying to these programs and they are selecting you, but you also want to make sure it's a good fit for you. Um, it is a commitment. Um, a master's program is shorter than a PhD program, but you will be spending probably around two years um, at that place. So you want to make sure it's somewhere that you're going to be happy and comfortable with as well. Um, so I felt like that was a nice thing um, to really talk with her and see, okay, does it seem like our interests are going to line up? Um, does it seem like I feel like she's going to be someone who can help me or someone who would be interesting to work with? Um, and she was. Um, so she was definitely someone that in that statement of purpose that we had to write for the school that I mentioned that I would be interested in working with. Um, and Gratefully, I did get to work with her, so that worked out good. Um, so maybe the big um, push that I would say for applications is even if they don't require interviews, um, if you go and talk with these people or have phone interviews or, or whatever is available to you at that moment, then when they see those applications, your name's gonna jump out. Like you've put out the extra effort. And you've made sure it's somewhere that you wanna go. Um, so I would just recommend starting early and um, just reaching out to those professors because most of the time they're pretty open to talking with you. Yeah. <laughs> I think I'll let the camera focus a little bit too. 
Okay, so once again, my name is Rachel Farley. I'm also a second year in this program. Um, so first off with some application tips, kind of like Callie said, make sure you are applying early. Don't wait until the last minute because you want to make sure your application is in the best shape that it can be. You don't want a last minute personal statement. You want it to be put together really well, well written. So make sure you're looking on the website for your program that you're applying to and really focusing on what you want to do. So kind of have an idea of what you want to research so you know what professors you want to work with. That way you can have a good idea of specific faculty you can include in your personal statement. Um, one thing I really want to like focus on about your application, um, make sure when you're writing your letters of recommend, getting your letters of recommendation from people, don't just reach out to teachers you've had, like for example, a statistics professor that you got an A in their class. If that's the only relationship you have, that may not be the best type of letter. It may be better to get a letter from somebody that you know super well, that knows your research interests, that may know your work ethic, like something like that would be a little bit better than just getting a letter from someone who just was um, your teacher in a class of 100 people, it might be a little bit better to get someone who knows you a little more so they can really focus on your strengths more specifically than just your grades because there's more things that are important in a um, master's program than just grades. We want also to focus on um, your research strengths and things like that. Um, so my experience here in grad school has been really great. I actually just really came here to get more research experience because I didn't do any undergraduate research because um, I wasn't planning on doing a master's or a PhD, but I got a lot more than just research experience here. Um, I've really gained a lot of just professional development. Um, I came in here just kind of focusing on getting my master's, doing my thesis and being done, but um, I've actually ended up being a teacher for statistics labs, um, and I really didn't think I would ever do that because I never thought that I would want to be a teacher, um, but I actually really enjoy it, and it's something I really like a lot, so it's something that I found may actually be another option for me as a career path after um, my master's program as well, um, and I wouldn't have even applied to be a teacher for the statistics statistics lab if it wasn't for um, one of the professors here encouraging me and telling me that I really should apply for the position. So um, the faculty here is really, really great in pushing you towards um, your goals you may not even know that you have yet. So that's one really awesome thing about this program is just how much the faculty is involved in your research and just um, in your life as a whole. Just when you ask for their help, they'll definitely give it to you. So that's really, really great. Um, when you're applying to this program specifically or coming here, definitely have an idea of what you want to research. Um, don't wait until you get here to be like, hey, what should I research? Have an idea of what you want to do your thesis over. Um, it's kind of a good idea that way you can really focus on who you want to work with. And so you can kind of have a plan of what you would like to do. You don't obviously have to have your entire thesis planned out yet, but just at least have an idea of what you would like to do. Um, when I got here, I thought I wanted to go kind of a different path with my thesis. And then once I talked it over with my mentor, he kind of um, directed me in a different way, but it worked out really well because I already had an idea of what I wanted to do. So that kind of speeds up the process of getting your thesis completed in the two year time. Um, if you have an idea already, once you get here. Um, definitely when you come here, you will work hard. You'll be stressed out. It's a master's program, so you'll definitely be stressed at some points, but the faculty and staff here is just awesome and your cohort um, is a big support system as well. So you're not in it alone. Um, we have 12 people in our cohort and it's a really great group of people who's there for each other and we support each other and we're all, you know, struggling together. So it's a really great um, group atmosphere of just support um, from the peer, from our peers and from our professors alike. So um, overall, I really enjoyed this program a lot and I'm going to be sad to leave. So. It's a great place if you're looking for a research experience. Thanks. Wait for it to focus. All right, awesome. Hello. So um, I'm Erin Cowart. Uh, like I said earlier, I am a second year in this program. So just some uh, quick application tips, kind of like what Callie and Rachel already said definitely start early. Um, I'm a huge procrastinator on pretty much everything. So generally I try to plan to have everything done about two to four weeks ahead of time. That way, if any last minute emergencies occur, I have time to take care of that. And then also, um, I know that Dr. Haskard mentioned this about uh, those three course requirements, the 
uh, intro to psychology, the statistics, and then the research methods. Um, those are definitely important, but I think, uh, as she said, um, if your courses have different names, that's okay. So for my undergrad, I actually tested out of intro to psychology, so I never actually took that course. And then specifically for research methods and statistics, my undergrad did a combination course. So I never actually took an individual statistics or an individual research methods course. So even if you have something kind of weird like that, but you still have that knowledge base from your undergrad, don't let that um, keep you from applying. Because what's important is the information that you know. And then also just regarding applications, um, kind of like what they both said earlier, you definitely want to look and see what um, professors are accepting graduate students and then um, making sure that their research interests align with what you're interested in. And so generally, um, my method when I was applying, I was looking at programs that had at least three people uh, that were accepting graduate uh, students in an area that was similarly related to what I was interested in. Um, that way, if my primary choice was someone that I just ended up absolutely hating or whatever just didn't work out, then I at least had two other people I could go to. Um, as far as what graduate school has been like for me, it's been so much fun. I really, really love school. And I remember when first getting like my first homework assignment for graduate school, I was so excited. Um, I know it's kind of weird, but I really loved it. And so um, kind of like what they said earlier, uh, it's really, really supportive here. You know, the professors, they want you to succeed. They want you to be the best person that you can be. Uh, there's a lot of support from your cohort. You know, and then also, like Dr. Hasford said earlier, um, even if there aren't uh, classes that are offered in the program but are offered outside of the program, you can still take those classes. So like this semester, I'm taking a course in the uh, philosophy department, and then I'm also taking another course in the anthropology department. And both of those are related to my overall thesis, and those have been a lot of fun, but I still definitely miss the program <laughs> in some cases. But um, there's really just a lot of um, options. One thing that did surprise me, uh, because I came from a, a small undergraduate uh, program, there are so many resources, resources here for um, completing your thesis work. So there's, uh, you know, entire systems of participants that you can use to collect data from. There are so many options outside of, you know, the intro to psychology students uh, for collecting data from. Lots of uh, resources as far as funding goes for funding your thesis and um, you know just tons of resources and so it's really just been a lot of fun and as far as advice uh, I would give to someone considering this program um, whether and Callie kind of touched on this earlier um, definitely uh, meet with uh, the person you want to work with um, either before you're accepted or after you're accepted, um, just to make sure that you actually do want to work with them and ask and see what their plan um, is for you if you were to be working with them. Are they going to say, go for it, do whatever you want for research? Or are they going to want to um, kind of guide you along a path, something closer to what they're researching? So my advisor is Dr. Mendez. We didn't um, bring him up, but he's a social psychologist. However, my research interest is in moral psychology, which is still related to social psychology, but it's not exactly his interest space. But he was very much okay with me um, researching something that he wasn't exactly an expert in. So yeah, that's, that's about it. Thank you guys very much. Okay, let me let the camera focus. There we go. Thank you so much, all three of you. You said a lot of really valuable and important things, and I think it's good to get your perspective and your experiences um, as students that, uh, that have gone through this program and applied to this program. Um, I would like to open it up now to questions from uh, our participants. If you have any questions, um, you don't have to email us. You can if you want to, but we'd love to answer your questions here today. You can put them in the chat box. 
You can also um, ask them via audio. Let's see if we can get you. Um, we've got you unmuted. Or um, so either through audio or through the chat box. Are there any questions for me or for any of the graduate students? If so, we would love to hear them. And, and typing them is fine. So we've got the chat open. Can you hear us? <laughs> We'd love to answer any questions if, if you have them. If you are still thinking about your questions and you want to email us uh, later, that's fine too. If you would like to see this PowerPoint, you can also email us um, for that. And we'll, let's give you a minute. First, I wanted to thank you. I'm just gonna read the question um, out loud for those that, um, that, that may not be able to see the screen. Uh, Alexis said, I wanted to thank you for giving us your time and knowledge, appreciate it. Thank you, we're, we're glad to do this. We're, we're hoping to kind of keep doing this sort of webinar. Um, do you have any questions for us? Okay, um, what does full-time on campus mean? Good question. Um, okay, so uh, basically that means this is not an online program or a distance program. So our courses are in-person, face-to-face classes. We're in one of those classrooms right now. Um, so you will um, take all your classes here on campus. Full-time, I guess that it's not a part-time program. So you enroll in um, a full-time Sorry, full time set of hours. Um, and can you think of any other additions to that? Yeah, this, the number of hours, Sarah, it's, is it this? I think it's 10. I think, I think it's, it, yeah, I think it's, yeah, it's, it's in total, it's a 38 hour program, but the number, the exact number of hours each semester is the first two years, it's, yeah, it's 10. It's 10. 10. So that's, so taking our, our required courses, kind of our typical load of courses is I guess what I mean by full-time. Does that help, does that answer the question? Yes, okay. Do you have any other questions for us? And if you, if you're, if you have audio, please feel free to ask your, you don't have to type them, but if you wanna ask them via audio, that's fine too. 